I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. Redemption Hymnal 708 Breathe on me, breath of God Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Heavenly Father, we give you all thanks and praise. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Father, for grace to come again July 14, 2020 at Bethel Experience. We thank you, gracious Lord, for what you did last year. We thank you, Father, for what you are going to do this year. 
We thank you, Father, because you are already here. We give you thanks and praise, Lord. We honor you. We adore you. Father, we know you are here already. And into every home, into every home where people are tuning in to this time, Heavenly Father, I ask for your presence in the name of Jesus. I trust you to take your place in each home and more importantly, in each heart in the name of Jesus. Because today, Father, it's all about you. It's all about you having your way. It's all about you reigning over everything. It's all about you being glorified. We trust you, Father. And I say, Father, it is over to you as we declare this meeting open in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I give God thanks and praise, and I want to welcome you to Bethel Experience 2020. It gives me great joy that we are able once again to meet with the Lord, the Lord who has been faithful. For the benefit of those who are joining us who are not members of this church, I'll just briefly introduce you to um, what is behind July 14th, what is be behind Bethel Experience. So many years ago, the Lord made a covenant with us in this church that in the month of July, he will always meet with us to deliver. And particularly on July 14th, we always meet to thank him because that very year when the Lord made that covenant with us, there were some events, some things happened um, during which the Lord delivered members of the church, a number of members of the church experienced various things um, that could have turned um, into very sad stories, but the Lord turned it around and the Lord made a covenant with us that every July, he will always meet with us to deliver us. And we have found him to be faithful. And last year, he then brought us into Bethel experience that July 14th now becomes Bethel experience for us. And what happened at Bethel? In the book of Genesis 28, we read the story of how God met with Jacob at Bethel. Jacob was running away from what was an unhappy situation in his life. He ran away from it, but on the way the Lord met with him. And there where he laid to rest in a dream, he saw a ladder from heaven to the earth where he laid. And of course, at the top of that ladder was God and God spoke to him. God revealed himself to, David, to, to, to Jacob there as God Almighty. And the Lord spoke to him that he would not leave him. He would be with him. He would not leave him until he had fulfilled every word he had spoken concerning him. Jacob was overwhelmed. And as he said there, he said, Wow, this is none other than the house of God. It is the gate of heaven because he saw on that ladder angels going up and down. What does that mean to us? That ladder is Christ Jesus connecting us here on earth to God above there as God Almighty. And of course, the angels coming down to receive our prayers and taking those prayers up, bringing down the answers. And so, Today, as we come again to meet God at Bethel, I want you to have that picture in your mind. I want you to believe that the Lord is in your room. Wherever you are, the Lord is there with you. As he met with Jacob there, that ladder that is Christ Jesus will be present in your home. The angels will be present to hear you to carry your prayers up to the Lord and to bring the answers. And I trust the Lord, he who met with David and said to him, I will not leave you alone. I will be with you. I will not leave you until I have fulfilled every word I have spoken concerning you. The same God will meet with us today and the same God will do great and mighty things amongst us. Last year was very wonderful. And tonight we're just going to have a few testimonies from some of um, some people 
who experienced the Lord last year, they're willing to share their testimonies with us. Amen. And I'm hoping those testimonies will be an encouragement. We only have a few, um, uh, we have a few minutes for just a few of them. And um, as they share their testimonies, I want you to trust the Lord that you too will come next year and have a testimony. You know, Hannah went to Shiloh. She met with the Lord. The Lord answered her. She was able to return to thank the Lord. It's my prayer that you too will have a testimony and will be able to return to thank the Lord. I want to encourage you today. Come with faith in your heart. You are not going to do the work. I am not going to do the work. It is the Lord who is going to do the work. It's not about us because we have no righteousness to do to receive anything, but it is to the glory of the Lord and he will do it for his own name's sake. So I'm asking you and encouraging you, you just come in faith, trust the Lord, implicit faith, just believe him that he's already waiting here for you and he will answer you, praise the Lord. And so as you listen to these few testimonies, I want you to be encouraged and the Lord will do yours in Jesus' name, amen. Can we have the testimonies quickly? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise Jesus. I came to Battle Experience last year, 14th of July, 2019, and I met the Lord. Praise the Lord. I met the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, the God of Apostle Ayo Omideyi. Praise the Lord. The minister in charge asked everybody to place their request to the Lord directly, that we should talk to God directly. And I believed and I spoke to the Lord about the need for an office space. After being let down so many times, I could only trust in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And so I did. And praise the Lord. I'm here today to testify of the goodness of the Lord. The Lord who miraculously provided for the late Apostle Omidei, this beautiful building met with me that day. Praise God hallelujah. and to his glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. When I least expected what I least expected beyond my widest imagination, just like he did for the Apostle, he met me at the point of my need hallelujah. and he provided the firm with an office space the Lord. beyond what I could imagine. And I can only come this day to say thank you. Yeah. I can only thank God for his mercy, mercies. I can thank God for his favors. I can thank God because he has proven to me that he is the Lord who controls the universe, that the earth truly is his, and the riches of this world belongs to him. And to whomever he wish, he gave it to them and so i've come to praise the name of god and i just want to encourage everybody that as we have come this day believing giving praise to god that god will meet with his people in july will definitely meet with us again and next year we shall be back to say thank you to his holy name because he's going to do beyond above what we even think or ask in jesus name praise the name of jesus praise the name name of Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I had been using a walking stick because of pain in my knees. I didn't like, I didn't like using it, but anytime I'm in pain, I had to use it. I believe that with God, nothing is impossible and so in faith i asked god at the bechtel experience last year 2019 that i don't want to use the walking stick anymore that i don't want to use the walking stick anymore i thank god that he had me and I've stopped and I've stopped using the walking stick the walking stick from from October 
So I just want to thank God for hearing my prayer in Jesus' name that I'm not using the walking stick anymore. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty God. I'm here today to give thanks to the Lord for what the Lord did for me last year. Last year I had an impossible situation before me with regards to a record that is in my name that had been disturbing me from pursuing the fullness of my career. It's been there for quite a while, but I thank God because I committed this into the hand of the Lord. And even though this record is not I, it's not supposed to be changed, but through God's grace and mercy, somehow, without the intervention of any human being or my knowledge, somehow this record was cleansed and I got another version of it and the thing that was written against my name was removed. And now the restriction on my employment has been removed and now I can pursue um, any employment I want to do. So I'm thanking God because I committed this into his hand last year during the Bethel experience and I thank God because the Lord answered me and yes, here I am uh, totally free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm testifying to the prayers answered by fire. Last year, Bethel experience. I put in some prayer requests and I was backing up with mom, praying with me every night and one other pastors we were praying. By praying, why we were praying and planning how the strategy we're going to go about what we were praying for, God just did his, our own planning was going on and God's plan overruled our own it was shocking that wow god answered by truly truly god answered by fire by october god just made a way for the first step of that prayer which we know that that which he has started he will surely complete it in jesus name and i'm also testifying to the glory of god that he answered my prayer request also. I'm now, I'm now a registered foster parent. All this I put in the in, in better uh, uh, experience last year prayer request. I thank God for that, and I'm so thanking God for answering prayers of protection. That prayer that we pray every time, prayer, prayer of protection, prayer of protection, it's working. Hallelujah. It is really working like fire. Hallelujah. We prayed, we, we, I, 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 will, I, will, I, will, I will beg everyone to continue praying that prayer of protection every minute, every time it works. And I pray that it will continue to bless us and multiply us in Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm thanking God for answered prayers and breakthrough in relation to my career. Last July 14th, one of my prayer requests was in regards to my career. I prayed for progression in my then current company or in another company before the end of the year. Around September, things were not looking promising in my then current workplace, so I decided I would start my job search. A month passed and the job search was not looking promising. I wasn't able to dedicate enough time to applications due to studies, and the ones I did make, I wasn't hearing back from the recruiters. I decided to park the studies and put my focus into job hunting as I was growing increasingly unhappy in my role. Things started to pick up and trust in God and believe in I would find something before the new year, I decided to hand in my notice so I would find it easier to attend interviews etc. In the last few weeks leading up to the end of my notice period, things really picked up and there was a particular role I was very keen on. During the interview process, I used my prayer oil at every stage for the covering of God and his spirit. 
To the glory of the Lord, my last day at my then current role was the same that I received the news I was being offered the role I wanted to start in the new year. I praise God for his word that is true and never failing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our God is faithful. Hallelujah. And we thank God for those testimonies. Like I said, of course, there are many more, but we wouldn't have time to allow everybody. But we give God thanks for what he did. And I hope that we will be encouraged um, by these testimonies that we too will return to thank the Lord. I want to teach us the chorus um, that some of you probably heard at the beginning of this meeting, a chorus about coming to Bethel, amen? And it's a chorus I want you to take away with you from this meeting, trusting the Lord. As you sing it here, I want you to continue singing it after today, reminding the Lord that you came to Bethel, you met with him, and he who met with Jacob will also meet with you and do what you're trusting him for in Jesus' name, hallelujah. It's a very simple chorus, and so I'm sure you'll be able to pick it up as we sing it. Okay. Can we have the music? Can we have the music? I have come to Bethel. I will meet the Lord. I have come to Bethel. I will meet the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. I have come to Bethel. I will meet the Lord. I have come to Bethel. I will meet the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Heavenly Father, we give you all thanks and praise. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Father, for grace to come again July 14th, 2020 at Bethel Experience. We thank you, gracious Lord, for what you did last year. We thank you, Father, for what you are going to do this year. We thank you, Father, because you are already here. We give you thanks and praise, Lord. We honor you. We adore you. Father, we know you are here already. And into every home, into every home where people are tuning in to this time, Heavenly Father, I ask for your presence in the name of Jesus. I trust you to take your place in each home and more importantly, in each heart in the name of Jesus. Because today, Father, it's all about you. It's all about you having your way. It's all about you reigning over everything. It's all about you being glorified. We trust you, Father. And I say, Father, it is over to you as we declare this meeting open in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I give God thanks and praise, and I want to welcome you to Bethel Experience 2020. It gives me great joy that we are able once again to meet with the Lord, the Lord who has been faithful. For the benefit of those who are joining us who are not members of this church, I'll just briefly introduce you to um, what is behind July 14th, what is be behind Bethel Experience. So many years ago, the Lord made a covenant with us in this church that in the month of July, he will always meet with us to deliver. And particularly on July 14th, we always meet to thank him because that very year when the Lord made that covenant with us, there were some events, some things happened um, during which the Lord delivered 
members of the church, a number of members of the church experienced various things um, that could have turned um, into very sad stories, but the Lord turned it around and the Lord made a covenant with us that every July, he will always meet with us to deliver us. And we have found him to be faithful. And last year, he then brought us into Bethel experience that July 14th now becomes Bethel experience for us. And what happened at Bethel? In the book of Genesis 28, we read the story of how God met with Jacob at Bethel. Jacob was running away from what was an unhappy situation in his life. He ran away from it, but on the way the Lord met with him. And there, where he led to rest, in a dream, he saw a ladder from heaven to the earth where he laid. And of course, at the top of that ladder was God, and God spoke to him. God revealed himself to David, to, to, to Jacob there as God Almighty. And the Lord spoke to him that he would not leave him. He would be with him. He would not leave him until he had fulfilled every word he had spoken concerning him. Jacob was overwhelmed. And as he said there, he said, wow, this is none other than the house of God. It is the gate of heaven because he saw on that ladder angels going up and down. What does that mean to us? That ladder is Christ Jesus, connecting us here on earth to God above there as God Almighty. And of course, the angels coming down to receive our prayers and taking those prayers up, bringing down the answers. And so today, as we come again to meet God at Bethel, I want you to have that picture in your mind. I want you to believe that the Lord is in your room. Wherever you are, the Lord is there with you. As he met with Jacob there, that ladder that is Christ Jesus will be present in your home. The angels will be present to hear you, to carry your prayers up to the Lord and to bring the answers. And I trust the Lord. He who met with David and said to him, I will not leave you alone. I will be with you. I will not leave you until I have fulfilled every word I have spoken concerning you. The same God will meet with us today and the same God will do great and mighty things amongst us. Last year was very wonderful. The theme, living water, healing streams. Amen. Very often we seek God for healing. And when we do, we talk about the blood of Jesus. We talk about the name of Jesus. We use the words of the scripture. They are the things that come to us very readily and rightly too. And we thank God for the efficacy in, those, uh, in that provision that God has made for us. The, the power in his name, the power in the blood of Jesus, the power in the word. But today we want to look at another provision that the Lord has made for us. And that provision is in the water of life. Hallelujah. The water of life. In Revelations chapter 22, um, verses 1 and 2, I'll just read quickly. Revelations chapter 22, verses 1 and 2 says, then he showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. I want us to take a key from that last sentence. It says the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, if the leaves of the trees that were planted alongside that river of life, if they are what, if it says that they are for the healing of the nation, it tells, it means that that water that feeds those trees has healing 
properties. Hallelujah. And it is the healing property in that river of life that we want to tap from today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The river of life. Take note. Life. The river of life. Which means if that river, if the power in that river flows into us today or flows into any area of our lives that we ask the Lord to allow it to flow into, we know that it will have life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And to take us further, we're going to look into the book of Ezekiel chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. And we're going to go through some verses in that chapter to enlighten us more about this river of life. This river that flows from the throne of God. Take note of its source from the throne of God. Hallelujah. And so if the source is from the Lord, you can't go wrong with it. Amen. In, in chapter 47, it says in verse one, this is Ezekiel saying this revelation as he was shown. In verse one, he says, then this angel who was talking to him, this being who was talking to him, he says, then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced the east. And the water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me round on the outside to the outer gate that faces toward the east. And the water was coming out on the south side. Hallelujah. So he was shown the source of this water. Imagine that temple being the sanctuary. Hallelujah. That water was flowing from a sanctuary. And then in verse six, then he said to him, son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back along the bank of the river. As I went back, I saw upon the bank of the river, very many trees on the one side and on the other. And he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah. And when it enters the stagnant waters of the sea, the water will become fresh. That's the first thing I want us to take note of. It talks about this river, this water flowing into a sea. Other versions of Bibles talk, about, they describe this river, this river as flowing into the Dead Sea. Take note there. It talks about a stagnant, a stag, it talks about it entering stagnant waters of the sea. As I said, in other versions, it calls it the, Red sea, the Dead Sea. And for those of us who know anything about the Dead Sea or those who don't know, the Dead Sea is the saltiest sea in all the world. And that's why you will find that there is no fish in it. In the Dead Sea, you have also the lowest part of the waterbed. But big as that sea is, no living fish, no living organism in it because of the saltness of that sea. And that is why it is described as the Dead Sea. And this scripture tells us that this river flowing from the sanctuary, it goes into this stagnant water. Anything that is stagnant, anything that is stagnant has no flow, has no movement, no progress. And of course, when you now have water that is stagnant, you can be sure that in a short time, whatever was living in, in it would die. And when it dies, what will happen? It will give off a foul smell. And so it's no use to anybody. It cannot be consumed. You don't want it. If you drink it, it will, it will cause you some disease. So this river, we are told, goes into stagnant waters. As we're reading, as I'm talking, I want you to begin to think about your life. 
What area of your life has been stagnant? What area of your life has had no life in it? What area of your body has been dead? What area of your body has not been functioning as it should function? These are the areas I want you to begin to bring to mind and begin to place before the Lord. Because as we read the scriptures, as the word is going out, the Lord is going to begin his work in your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He will begin his work in your life. Amen. It says there, that water went into stagnant waters. Amen. But what happens to the stagnant waters when that river goes in? It says the water will become fresh. Hallelujah. Wherever this river of life flows into, whatever had died in it, whatever had been polluted, whatever had been unclean, that river of life will make it fresh. That river of life will give it life. Hallelujah. And so it will be for you today in Jesus' name. That as you believe the Lord, as you believe that the river of life is flowing from his sanctuary into your room where you are, into your house where you are, into your life, into your body, whatever has been stagnant will receive life to begin to move in Jesus' name. Some of us have gotten to the point where we are frustrated. Some of us have gotten to the point where we have given up hope. We imagine nothing else can, no good, nothing good can happen again. Is it in your career? Is it in your relationship with the Lord? Is it because of promises you have been trusting God for and nothing is happening? There is hope for us. Hallelujah. Because today, I know it that God of Bethel is here. The Lord who met Jacob is here. That ladder that is Christ Jesus is here to hear your prayer, to hear your sighs, to hear what you will say to him in prayer. He will release the power of that river of life. It will flow into your life. It will flow into any area of your life that needs attention. And you will see the hand of the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What area of your life has not been prospering as it should? has not been giving off the, the goodness that it should. You know, in the days of Elisha, he got to a place, a city, and they said to him in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, they said, look, Elisha, the land is good, but the water is bad, and the land is unproductive. What is it that God has made that should be producing good for you? And yet, because the water that is supposed to be making it good in your life has been polluted, things are not happening as it should. There is hope for us today because the river of life is going to flow to transform that water, to purify it in the name of Jesus. Whatever has polluted the water of your life, the Lord is going to cleanse it this very day, that something new begins to happen, that you begin to be productive in Jesus' name. I just beseech you that you will let, you will allow your faith to rise. Believe the Lord that today, even for those of you who have brought your, uh, your bottles of water and you are presenting them, I want you to begin to trust the Lord that as you are hearing this word, the angels are already doing the work. The Holy Spirit is already at work, touching your bottles of water, releasing that power into them for the work that the Lord will do in your life in Jesus' name. It says, wherever the water is stagnant, that that river goes into, it becomes fresh. Hallelujah. It becomes fresh. And so it shall be for you in Jesus' name. And then it says, it says, and wherever, in verse 9, and wherever the river goes, every living creature which swarms will live, and there will be very many fish. For this water goes there, that the waters of the sea may become fresh. Hallelujah. So we've, talk, we've talked about the river of life, making our lives fresh, giving us life where we had died, giving life to what had been stagnant in our lives. Now it's talking also about what? About the, 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 the uh, uh, swarms. It says there will be swarms of living creatures. That is, there will be abundance. In the name of Jesus, there will be abundance. We will no longer suffer lack 
where we should have been we should have been enjoying abundance hallelujah swarms it says there will be swarms swarms of living things amen swarms will live what had been empty will now become full what had been scarce will now become plenty hallelujah because the river of life is flowing into it that it's that is the, the the type of power that this river of life possesses the river that comes from the throne of the almighty and the same thing i pray today that the lord will release that abundance into our lives in Jesus' name hallelujah hallelujah because it says everything wherever it touches it will live it will live and when it leaves it means that it's going to multiply Things will be multiplied because there is life in it in the name of Jesus. Imagine the Dead Sea with nothing, no fish in it. When this river goes in, then suddenly you have fish in it. Hallelujah. Because the power of the Lord has touched it. And God has the power. You know the amazing thing? It is in God's hands to choose where that river of life goes and where it does not go. My prayer is that today he will, he will give that decree on your behalf. The Dead Sea, that Dead Sea that we, we, we know of in, in Israel, do you know that it is the same sea that flows into the River Jordan? And yet, when it gets to the River Jordan, it is a completely different picture. In the River Jordan, you don't have the same saltness. You don't have the same, the same picture where you have dead things. That is God for you. He knows where to tell the what he, he has the power to dictate what happens and what does not happen. And so tonight, he has the power to say to what has died in your life, to say to that dead river in your life, begin to receive life and it will receive life because he has the control of everything in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That river that flows into stagnant waters will give it life. It will give it abundance. Amen everything it will become fresh hallelujah and it goes on further to say fishermen verse 10 fishermen will stand beside the sea from engedi to engelin it will be a place for the spreading of nets its fish will be of very many kinds like the fish of the great sea hallelujah so furthermore there will be productivity there will be diversity hallelujah that is what the Lord will do as the river of life flows into our lives. Productivity, diversity. Amen? Because that is what it says there. When it says fishermen, imagine that same stagnant water where you wouldn't find fishermen going because there is no fish to catch there. Now it's saying there will be fishermen there, a lot of them spreading their nets because they have caught so many. And it says many kinds. It will not just be one. There will be diversity. There will be multiplication. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That shows you the sort of flavor that God will bring into our lives after today in Jesus' name. It must, our lives must not be the same to, again. It is in our hands to believe the Lord because he's here to make that provision in Jesus' name. Amen. Then in, in verse 12, it says, and on the banks, on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail. Amen. But they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. The fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fruitfulness. There will be provision. There will be fruitfulness. It says those trees that are watered by this river of life, they bear their fruits in due season. They, on time, they bring out their produce. And it's the same way as this river of life. Take note, it says this river that flows from the sanctuary. That is why this trees enjoy such benefits and that is the same thing that is going to happen to our lives tonight in Jesus' name that we begin to bear fruit hallelujah we begin to have provision because it says their fruits are for food amen and then it says their leaves for healing 
And that is where it ties it up with what we read in Revelations 22, to show you that this is the river of life from God's sanctuary that we're talking about, from God's throne. This is what the Lord wants to do in our lives this year. Hallelujah. And I'm, I, 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 I pray that as you call upon him today, the Lord will display, he will manifest the properties of this river of life in our lives in Jesus' name. The Lord will surprise us. The Lord surprised the woman of Samaria. You know, the beautiful thing about that story of the woman of Samaria, Jesus was waiting for her at Jacob's well. Today before you came, the Lord was already waiting for you. I'm telling you what he said to me, that before we get here, he's already here. Jesus was waiting for the woman of Samaria. What a privilege. Jesus is waiting for you already. That woman got there. She got the surprise of her life. Praise the Lord. What she never thought she would receive at the beginning of that day, she received it that day. Jesus said to her, you don't need this water. What you need is the water of life. Hallelujah. You trust me. You receive this water of life. You won't need to be depending on this. Hallelujah. The testimony of that woman, she was so excited. Her life changed. She now even became a, 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 the hand of God extended. When she had received that water of life, it was the water of life that she received that transformed her. That is why she could go to others. And, be, and she began to proclaim, come and see a man who told me what I never had before. That river of life, the power of that river of life entered into her. She didn't need to drink it physically because we are not just talking about physical things here. Because she believed what Jesus said and she accepted it, it happened. And I also want you to believe that as you are hearing this word, Amen. The power of that river of life will come into you. Remember even the woman with the issue of blood. She came just as she was. She didn't need anybody to pray for her. At Bethel experience, you will talk to God yourself. Because it is you that God has come to meet. I'm going to talk to God about myself. You will talk to God about yourself. Because he wants to hear you. You know what he said? He said to Moses, he, when Moses said to him, let me see your glory. Don't you want to see God's glory? Moses said, let me see. You. Who will go with us? Let me see your glory. Ah, God said, I will do this for you because you have found favor and because I know you by name. My prayer is that the Lord will know you by name today. You will find favor. The Lord will know you by name. That is, you are not just statistics to the Lord. He will find you out. He will seek you out wherever you are. He will seek you out. Amen. That woman with the issue of blood, she came and with faith, just touched the hem of the garment of Jesus and the power was released. It's the same thing I'm asking you to do today. With your faith, let the power be released from that river of life, amen, to come into your situation, to come into your circumstance. The Lord is able. There is nothing that is difficult for him to do. We are the problem. God hasn't got a problem. He is ready to give it. Remember the vision that Jacob had, the dream that he had, the angels were going up and down. I tell you, even now, they are already at work. The Holy Spirit is at work. It is for you to believe and it will be yours in Jesus' name. Whatever water the world offers can pollute us. The water that we drink physically will pollute us. The, in fact, some people can be wicked. They can defile the water that goes into a city if they want to poison everybody. But you know what? This water that we are receiving today, the power in this water, the power that will go into this water that you are presenting is going to be your immunity. Look at the world that we are in now. So much uncertainty. We don't even know what's going to happen. Amen. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know whether there's going to be yet another plague, whether there's going to be yet another virus. But you know what? The power of the Lord from his sanctuary, Mahora Sili Kaura Pairasai, Paura Maira Sili Kaira Maira Sai, the power of the Lord from his sanctuary is going to flow into your bottles of water. And I say to you in the name of the Lord, as you use this water by the Lord God who called me, by the covenant of my calling, I assure you, the Lord will make you. He will give you the immunity you need. He will give you the immunity you need. Amen. 
just like the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus is the same water of life. So when I'm talking about the water of life, I'm talking about the same power that is in the blood of Jesus. Because whether it is the blood, whether it is the water, they're from that one source, Christ Jesus, the author, the author of the blood and the author of the water. That power will flow into your vessels of water and you will see God's hand in power. It is not about me. It is about God. I am nothing. It is God who has his name to defend. It is God who has his name to be proclaimed. And if you believe him, you will have a testimony in Jesus' name. You know what it says in Psalm 45, 46? Psalm, the book of Psalms 46, it says what? It says there is a river in verse four. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Hallelujah. A river which makes glad the city of God. It's still talking about this river of life. If this river of life comes into your situation, into your heart, into your life, into your home, into your body, whatever it is you are presenting today, it will make you glad. Hallelujah. It says there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the most high. God is in the midst of that city. She shall not be moved. Because the river of life has gone into that place, into that area, into that environment, God will be there. And when God is there, what can move you? The Lord God, the Lord God whom we serve, whom we trust, whom we call upon. Remember, he's the creator of everything. You know, that is something that always excites me, that my God, my father, he's the one in control. There may be kings in the world. Rich people, people have money that I don't have. People have material things that I don't have. People can boast of all material things that I don't have. But what I have in God, my father, they do not have because my father controls them all. Hallelujah. And that is what I'm saying to you. When this river flows into your life, into your circumstance, into your situation, God will come and stay there. Amen. The Lord will come to do what? To stay there. It becomes his habitation because that river of life is there. And he says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her right early. The Lord is ready to help us. Amen. The Lord is ready to help us. So what is it that has been dead in your life? It must be revived. Hallelujah. Whatever has been barren must now bear fruit in Jesus' name. What has been sorrowful? must become joyous for you, hallelujah. What has been suppressed in your life, this power of the river of life will bring it out. It will come out to distinction that people will be amazed, hallelujah. This power in the river of life, it will flow even into our churches. At this time, our churches, the church of God worldwide, we need the church to be purified. This river of life will flow even into our churches and empower our churches in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Please, it does not matter how useless your case is. Trust the Lord. You had a few of the testimonies earlier on. The Lord is in control of all things. You know, one of my testimonies from last year, I put something before the Lord and this God is amazing. There was an event that would, was to happen that the Lord said, I must be there. And I had been wondering how would it be because I, I had my own timing. And I was thinking, but how would I do it? Because I'm supposed to be somewhere else. You know what the Lord did? The Lord controlled the computer and he made them choose me. The, the computer chose me. You know, randomly they choose people for jury service. And at random, they chose me for, for, for jury service. And of course, when you, when you are called for jury service, you have no choice to refuse it unless you have a very, very good reason. And as God will have it, I did not know. It was because God wanted to make sure that I was around for that event. If God can control the computer or the person who is scrolling on the screen to pick people, what can God not do? Hallelujah to fulfill whatever he wants you to do. He will control computers. He will control anything and everything. Who are the people who are supposed to take decisions on your account? The river of life will go and find them out. Hallelujah. 
So when you are praying, you are not going to pray for yourself alone. You are going to pray. This river of life, this power of life in this water must reach all those who have to make decisions about me. Hallelujah. They must receive that power to do God's will in my life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter how bad the circumstances. What does it say in the book of Job? Job 14, verse nine, 7 to 9. It says, for there is hope for a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again and that its shoots will not cease. Though its roots grow old in the earth and its stump die in the ground, yet, take note, yet at the scent of water, it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. Hallelujah. So whatever you think is so bad. The situation is so bad. Oh, nothing can happen. Listen, what Job was saying here is that, listen, it doesn't matter how long a, the roots of a tree have been in the ground and you think it can never sprout. Just let it smell a bit of flow of water. What will happen? It will begin to sprout again. And that is what is going to happen to us in Jesus' name. At the smell, at the scent, at the scent of this river of life in our lives, in our situations, the, the Lord will do wonders in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Another example I would like to give, you know, sometimes when you have plants that have um, died and you want to throw them away, I always say to people at home, I say, don't throw them away. We just leave, I leave them in the garden there. And I have always discovered after some time, just leave them. Months after, today I still discovered one. Months after, you will see that they begin to bring out fresh leaves again. What you thought had died completely. Leave it to God. He who waters the plants, he who feeds them, he, he's doing his work on them. It's all, it, it always amazes me. They will begin to bring leaves again without anybody's intervention to show you that God is at work. Now, that situation that you have given up on, you tell the Lord when you are praying that I said, if the plants in my garden that had been written off as dead, if without any man's intervention, they bring out fresh leaves again, then there is hope for you. Hallelujah. Just tell God that because he did it. I didn't do it. Nobody touched them. He who takes care of them, he did it. He will do yours in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We must trust him. Talk to Jesus, the rock in the wilderness. That was what God did for the children of Israel. When they were thirsty, he told them, he told Moses, talk to the rock. He wanted to take glory. That was what pained God. He wanted to take glory. He said to Moses, talk, talk. I want to take glory in the lives of these people. And the same thing today, you will talk to the rock. Christ Jesus is that rock. And water will gush out. Hallelujah. Water will gush out so that God will take glory in your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He will show his power. He will display his power that men may see. People must ask you what happened. And then you will tell them you were at Bethel experience. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. He's offering it to us. In John, in the book of John chapter, chapter seven, I read from verse 37. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and proclaimed, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the spirit, which those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus is offering us the water of life. He's offering us the spirit, the Holy Spirit that will do the work. Hallelujah. And he's saying, if you receive this water of life, the Holy Spirit will fill us. Amen. He, the Holy Spirit will fill us to overflowing. The Lord will touch the lives of those that you meet. Hallelujah. Because the, whole, the, the river of life that you have received, the Holy Spirit that you are, have received, Jesus is saying, out of you now will now go streams, rivers will now be flowing of living water. You become God's hand extended. So those of you who probably have been struggling spiritually in your calling, you have been struggling. Tonight is your night. Receive it. Say to the Lord, you are thirsty. You are, you are thirsty. Say to the Lord, I need it. 
I need that river of life, the Holy Spirit, so that I can go out today and become God's hand extended. So tonight, get ready to be filled. Get ready to be empowered. Get ready for the Lord to use you. Hallelujah. The promise for us as children of God is for eternity. Amen. And in Revelation 7, 17, the Bible tells us that the lamb will lead us. Those who are overcomers, the lamb will lead us to springs of living water. He will wipe away our tears. What we are asking the Lord for tonight, it goes beyond the physical water that we're even going to use. It's talking about our eternity. It's talking about preparation for eternity. It's talking about the river of life that will purify us, that will get us ready, and we will be qualified, amen, for the lamb, Christ Jesus, to lead us to that living water up there and wipe away our tears. Hallelujah. That, and that is why you know that this river of life, it has the property of a comforter. It will comfort. Amen. Because if it wipes away the tears of the people who are brought to it, then it will comfort you as well in Jesus' name. And so Jesus is saying, the thirsty should come. Those who desire, that's what, that's, that's what he said in that chapter 22, verse 17. Then he said, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who is thirsty come. Let him who desires take the water of life without price. Come just as you are. There is no condition. Amen. That woman with the issue of blood, she came just as she was. The woman of Samaria that Jesus was waiting for, just as she was. It didn't matter that People had condemned her. It didn't matter that she had had five husbands. Jesus was waiting her. Why? Because he says, while we were yet sinners, he loved us. So tonight is not even about our righteousness. We are coming by grace. We are seeking his mercy. We are saying to the Lord, for your name's sake. And that is what I want you to do as we begin to pray now. Hallelujah. 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 Are you ready to pray? I want you now, as I said earlier on, you should, be, you should have been bringing to your mind those things that you want to put before the Lord. And so as we begin to pray now, you are going to talk to God yourself. Every man for himself, God for us all. You are going to talk to God what you want him to do, what you want the power of the water of, of life to do in the water you are presenting. You will talk to God. Like we said, no gimmicks. There is no, it is one prophetess who said, mm -mm, your mouth, you have power, you have authority, amen. You are going to speak to the Lord and he will uphold what you are asking by grace for his name's sake, amen. And so we are going to begin to say to the Lord now, Lord, here I am. You said, whoever thirsts, let him come. Whoever desires, let him come. Lord, here I am. Lord, answer my prayer. This is what I'm asking you to do. Begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to talk to him. Begin to tell him what it is that you want him to do for you. Remember, this is Bethel, where the Lord met with Jacob. Hi. The ladder is Jesus. He is here. Praise the Lord. The angels are at work. The Holy Spirit himself is at work. The angels are here to carry your prayers up. The angels are also going to be giving the answers. They, they are the ones who will also come with the power or whatever the blessing is that God wants them to deposit. They will deposit it in your water. Remember in those days at that pool, it was an angel they used to wait for to come and touch, to stir up that pool. The Lord is still in the business of using angels. They are not, they have not been made redundant. Tonight, as you are praying, as you are talking to the Lord, that angel that will bring your blessings, he will deposit it into your bottle of water. Begin to talk to the Lord about it. Begin to tell him whatever it is. Remember, whatever has died must come to life. Whatever has been polluted, the Lord will make fresh. He will bring abundance to your life. He will bring, he will bring productivity to your life. Ha, Mahora Silicarosa, whatever had been stagnant will begin to move. There will be progress in the name of Jesus. What part of your body do you have ailments in? This 
this water will become your medicine. It will become your medicine. You will, if you trust the Lord, if you can trust your doctors to take your medication, then trust the Lord with this water. Trust the Lord with the water of life that as you take it, you too will receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord, let that river flow, flow into my life now, flow into my situation, flow into everybody that concerns my life that you want to use. All those that you must use for me that you that must do something to change my situation this river of life must also touch them because they, they will become the agents of changing your life they will become tools in the hand of the lord for your sake begin to tell the lord tell it to him whatever it is as i said don't think anything is hopeless don't think anything is beyond disability this is your God, your creator, your creator. Do you understand me? He knows every cell in your body. He knows every tissue in your body. He knows every vessel, every vein, everything that is your body, every strand of hair about you, he knows. And every circumstance that concerns you, this God knows. Tell him about it. Tell him about it. Tell him you desire, you are thirsty, you are tired. You are tired, Lord, I am tired. I need you to change my circumstance. I'm here at Bethel. You met with Jacob. You will meet with me. This is Bethel. Tell him, tell him, this situation seems so dead, seems so dry, like those plants that I said are in my garden. And yet, when they are left to the Lord, their creator, he himself is the one who waters them. And then they suddenly begin to bring, you will just suddenly see that they begin to sprout up with, with fresh leaves. Ah, Baba, my life, my life will become fresh. My life will become productive. In the name of Jesus, whatever had been stagnant in my life, Lord, it's going to begin to move. In the name of Jesus, I am trusting you, Father. I am trusting you because this is Bethel. And you know the nature of Jacob? Jacob, when he got to Peniel, he did not let the angel go. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Be like Jacob today. Be like Jacob, say, Lord, I will not let you go. I must receive my testimony. I must receive my answers. Lord, I am tired of waiting. I am tired of looking. I am tired of searching. I come to you today just as I am, weary, thirsty, but I, because you are offering it, I am receiving. I am receiving. I am receiving. I am receiving in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. Ask the Lord to help you. He is here. The living waters he has released, they will, that water will flow. That river of life will flow. It will flow. It will flow into your body, into your life, into your vessels of water in the name of Jesus. It will flow. It will flow. It will flow into the situation, into the circumstance. Is it the desert of your life? The river of life will flow into it. Is it, is it waters in stagnant? The river of life will flow into it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will hear you. If the Lord will hear you, are you waiting on the Lord for fruitfulness? The Lord will hearken to you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And I see that that, that, that gifts are already being brought. Mahora sili kaura mahila paura mahira sili kaura mahira sai. Oh, mahira maura kahira pira sili kaura sai. Mahora paura paira sili maura mahira sai. My Father and my God, I pray, I pray that these gifts be delivered to your children as they believe you, as they cry to you. Let these gifts be delivered to them in the name of Jesus. Whatever form, whatever shape, whatever nature, in the name of Jesus, you know their request. My Father, you know their request. I trust you. I believe you. It is for your name's sake, for your name's sake the Lord God of Bethel, you met with Jacob as God Almighty at Bethel. Your children have come to you at Bethel. You will reveal yourself as God Almighty in their lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we trust you. I give you thanks and praise. I bless your holy name. I thank you. I thank you. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is by your spirit. And so, Father, your spirit is at work. Your spirit is at work 
work in the name of Jesus because we have come to Bethel. Father Lord, we know that you have heard us. We know that you will, you will do it. You will manifest it. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. My Father and my God, in the name of Jesus, I give you all thanks and I give you all praise. You are the I am that I am. You are the covenant keeping God. You made a covenant with us at Bethel that in July, you will specially meet with us. Lord, I have never known you to fail. And every year we see your hand at work, particularly during July. Father, today, once again, we have come to you. Your children have come to you. It is not me they have come to, Father. It is you they have come to because it is you who has the power. And you said that this year, it is the river of life, the healing streams that you want to release into the lives of the people. Father, I have obeyed your word. And so it is for you to manifest yourself in the lives of your people. Not even because of who they are, Father. You know us for who we are. You know we are horrible sinners. If you leave it to us to be righteous before you do anything, Father, people will ridicule your name. And so, Father, for your name's sake, for your name's sake, I ask, Lord, that your name may be proclaimed, that you may show the jealousy for your holy name. Father, I pray that you will meet with your children. The power that is in that river of life, you release in the name of Jesus. Your people have spoken to you, Father. Let the work be done. Those who have presented their bottles of water, I pray my Lord and my Father, you will send your power. You will send your finger to touch each vessel in their homes, wherever they've kept those bottles of water. Father, that is why you are omnipresent. You are everywhere. And as I pray now, that river of life, Mahora Mahira Sili Kaura Mahora Paura Sai, Maura Kaira Pahira Sili Maura Pahora Mira Sai Kaila Mahora Sai, from your sanctuary flow into the vessels of water. You know what you want to do in each individual's life. You know what they have asked of you. You know what they desire. Lord, let it be in the name of Jesus that your name be glorified, that your name be exalted. Father, we will return to praise you. We will return to thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We trust you, Father, that you will not put our faith to shame. You will honor our faith. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you, gracious Father. Thank you because you will continue with us even in this month of July. Thank you, Father, as we trust you, Lord, you will go before us. To you be all adoration forever and forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Like that song says, I have come to Bethel. I have seen the Lord. I have come to Bethel, I have seen the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob has met with me today. I have come to Bethel, I have seen the Lord. I have come to Bethel, I have seen the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob has met with me today. That will be your song in Jesus' name. And you know what? You keep singing it to remind the Lord. <laughs> Lord, I met with you. I want to see manifestation. Hallelujah. The Lord will not fail you in Jesus' name. It only remains for me to say, if you are listening tonight and you haven't accepted Christ as your savior, this river of life is for you. Come to him. Come just as you are. There is life for you if you don't know him yet or maybe you have backslided and you don't know how to come back do you know what we, we you know what we had earlier on whatever has died will come to life so even if you know you have lost your bearing spiritually there is hope for you tonight 
just return to him. Say to him, Lord, I have met you at Bethel today. There is no going back. I have met you at Bethel today. It's life anew for me. Life anew in Christ. That water must well, must well out of me. People must now see your glory in my life. I pray that transformation will come to you. I pray that transformation will, will make an impact in you and you become God's vessel that will touch others in Jesus' name. Before you go, if you so choose, you can give an offering if they will put um, the church's um, um, bank details on the screen, if they have it. If they don't, well, um, well, okay, they have it. They love your money. Praise the Lord. <laughs> they already have it. So if you want to give an offering or if any of you made a vow last year and you want to pay your vow this year, then you have the details on the screen to pay your, um, to pay your vows. And if there's any offering at all, um, you have it on the screen or you can just check on the church's website. I pray that the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Please, let me make this point clear. Don't sow any seed. I beg you, don't sow any seed. If you want to give an offering, you are giving an offering just in appreciation of the Lord. Amen? Don't sow any seed. You can't bribe God. So I beg you, don't start putting money there because you think by putting that money, that is what will make God do it. Mm -mm. When he has done it, you can come back and then give whatever you want to give in thanksgiving. You cannot bribe God. So don't sow a seed. Just, you want to give an offering just like you go to the house of God to give an offering. Give that offering in appreciation of who God is to you. When you have seen what God has done, you can return and say, yes, at Bethel 2020, God did this. I want to give this. Or as soon as God does it, you can phone us, phone, phone the church or write, send an email or whatever, contact the church and share your testimony. And if you want to give an offering, then you can give a Thanksgiving offering. Amen. Please, I don't want anybody to, to, to fall into that trap. Don't sow any seed because you think that by sowing that seed, God will do what he will do. Let God should do what he wants to do because he's merciful unto you in Jesus' name. And the Lord will hear us in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been wonderful um, spending this time with you. My prayer is that together we will rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. My prayer is that together we will share testimonies. My prayer, I look forward to hearing from you that what you put before the Lord, the Lord has done for you. And together we will thank the Lord. Your water, you have prayed. God, you've talked to God what you want God to do. It's between you and God. Use it as you will. Use it as your medication. I didn't say don't, I didn't say stop taking your medication. Please get that right. Use it as you want whether you want to cook with it, whether you want to drink it, whether you want to have your bath with it, whether you want to sanctify your home with it, whatever way the Holy Spirit leads you to use it is entirely between you and the Lord. He will be glorified. You will have a testimony in Jesus' name. God bless you. Shall we bow our heads for the grace? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The blessings of God, the Father, of God, the Son, of God, the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with you. As I release this blessing into your lives, the name of the Lord be written upon you that he will identify you always as his own. And because he knows you by name, he will show you favor. He will do you good. So it shall be. The Lord God who met Jacob at Bethel, he will reveal himself to you and you will have cause to praise him. Thank you, gracious father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, amen and amen. If you would like to unmute yourselves, 
I would love you to shout seven hallelujahs to the Lord. Actually, I think we should shout 14 hallelujahs to the Lord because it is July 14th. Are we ready? Yes. One, two, three, yes. go. God God bless you and the Lord grant you grace to praise him. God bless that baby that is making him or herself known. The Lord has heard your voice in Jesus' name. God bless you and see you again, Bethel 2021, Bethel Experience 2021 with a testimony. God bless you. I have come to Bethel. I will meet the Lord. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord. The Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord, the Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord, I have come to Bethel, I will meet the Lord, the Lord who met with Jacob will meet with me today. Thank you.